I first became interested in working with indigenous people when I went to Africa in 2005 to work for the World Wildlife Fund and working with communities to put together wildlife management plans and to take the money that was coming in from hunting and tourism to put into development projects. A lot of these people, what they really wanted, one of their first requests when they had any money available was electricity or energy or some, something tied to electricity or energy. And energy is actually very expensive to provide if you're providing it via traditional grid-based electricity. Thousands and thousands of dollars a mile to actually string a transmission line. So one of these inexpensive solar-powered lights that might cost $15 or $20 really could make a difference for some of the people that I worked with. And so that was really the, the foundation of the idea for elephant energy in the bush in Africa. Our work on the Navajo Nation under the name Eagle Energy Now really began when Christian Alexander, who was one of our first volunteers, and I were working on a project through the University of Colorado with the Navajo Nation. Many people are surprised to learn that on the Navajo Nation in the United States there are this many people living without electricity. And we came across the statistic that there were 18,000 homes that lacked electricity. You know, within 10 miles of a, of a major highway in the United States and still living without electricity. Um, and one family in particular lived about five miles up a, a dirt road next to the highway and we went and spoke with them for, for a long time and basically they told us that uh, they were promised electricity by Christmas 16 years ago and it still hadn't come. Uh, and they were still using kerosene and candles and all sorts of very expensive fuels to, to provide general lighting in their house living in the same conditions as people in Namibia were. And so we sat down and tried to think about how we could use some of the technologies that we use in Namibia to benefit these people as well. I put like right in the middle here and just hung it here. And then the... I met Melton Martinez at a conference in Denver in the spring of 2010. Uh, Melton was one of the first people that we thought of when we, we needed to think about a Navajo facilitator on the Navajo Nation. His family has lived there for generations and generations. They've been involved in the discovery and, and mining of uranium back uh, when they discovered it many, many years ago. The time when we first found out what uranium was all about, we didn't really agree of why we should be using uranium. And uh, as we um, learned more about what uranium is about, we found out that it does cause cancer, a lot of health effects. Uh, most of our water has been contaminated from uh, uranium, highly radioactive liquid now, and it's not good for human consumption. Same way with coal mining. The, the coal mining dust, you know, they put it underground, but yet when the water seeps through it, it's eventually going right straight back into our aquifers. People using kerosene, propane, all the stuff, but what they do during the winter is they close all their doors and windows. At night, they'll turn on like the kerosene lamp, which has got a lot of uh, toxic fume, which will affect their health. Some nice kerosene here from your friendly neighborhood uh, market. The community itself is not aware of what they're inhaling and amount of money they're spending just to to light up their homes. Many children throughout the reservation go home at night and similar to Namibia they go to sleep when it gets dark because they don't have enough money to purchase the kerosene uh, that they would need to actually do their studies. We, we started looking into um, a different way of getting energy.
2011, we put displays with a number of small-scale renewable energy technologies in four or five shops uh, in the Eastern Agency of the Navajo Nation now and try to encourage them to start selling these types of small-scale technologies. Just from our experience working throughout Southern Africa, we have always been very interested in entrepreneurial approaches to distributing renewable energy technologies. We don't really want to be the donor agency handing out lots of lights and, and ruining markets where, where there could be actually a sustainable business that could arise. We are really working with shop owners who are interested not only in, in working on the business aspect of things and you know making some money off this, but also really interested in helping their community and trying to provide this service to people who really have had no access to these types of technologies before. Because really don't, I'm pretty excited about the product, you know, because these people out here really need this. There's a lot of people that don't have no electricity. Yeah. The initial cost of them buying it, and then once they get it, I mean, yeah. they'll be set. Uh, there's a lot of people that are very interested, especially the little ones. They are so impressed of how these instrument works. Elders and even middle-aged people, they are interested in buying, they are interested in using it. It's very educational, I think, uh, we have brought up to our community. We'll start with very small scale systems, really encourage people to learn about the energy technology, learn about solar technology, and then start working to provide solar systems that might be in the $100, $150 range with three or four lights and a centralized battery, um, and then really move on from there. So in effect, we're not just trying to set up this market-based system to sell small solar powered lights, we're providing education so that people can sit down learn about solar technology and then make choices about what to do with their own money uh, when they're thinking about where they want to get their energy in the future. Many of the problems that arise in developing countries and on the Navajo Nation and really all over the world in many different contexts can be solved uh, with business solutions and in ways that you know people can make a living uh, but also uh, try to do some good. A solar powered light can help a child study which will in turn allow him to get the type of education that he would need to go on and, and uh, get further education to be a protective member of, of the economy in Namibia or on the Navajo Nation or anywhere else. You know with great challenges there is plenty of room for opportunity and plenty of room for innovation to really solve these problems and stimulate economies around the world as well. We're looking into something better to where we, we have a future for our people, the, the new generation and the one that hasn't even been born. So if we can go into solar, life will continue forever.